Yeah, coach, obviously you're shorthanded with, with Booker out, then Aiden fouls out in the first overtime. Just your thoughts on, on how you guys hung in there, but maybe just maybe ran out of gas in the, in the second overtime, or what do you think? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I saw it going in the first overtime. Um, we Our guys were just battling. They were running on fumes. Um, <clears throat> I was just unbelievably proud of, of how they competed tonight. You know, we, we could have mailed it in um, coming off a tough one last night. And, you know, <clears throat> we just gave everything we had, but you could see it, you know, more in the second overtime, but I, I actually noticed it in the first. Um, we didn't have that same pop when we got to stop. You know, I thought our defense was a ton better tonight. And, uh, <laughs> Motion. Yeah, lights out. It wasn't, the lights went out, y'all. Been that kind of night. Right, right. I see that. <laughs> there we go. There we go. <laughs> so appropriate. <laughs> but I, I was, I was unbelievably proud of the way we fought tonight. Um, we had guys cramping up, couldn't finish the game. Uh, Chris, you know, at his age, to continue to, to battle and compete the way he did, play 42 minutes and, and you know, almost have a triple-double is pretty impressive. You know, they made plays, we made plays, we just couldn't make, um, <clears throat> you know, enough of them to win the game. And just just following up with Aiden, would it look like a knee, maybe knock knees with Jokic? Just what's what's his status? I think he's okay. I think he just bumped knees, um, but he seemed to be okay. <sighs> Next is going to be Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports, followed by Brendan Clean. Hey, Monty, was Cam Johnson the guy that cramped up for you guys? Yeah, we um, took him back out there. He was he was cramping up pretty bad. Yeah, it seemed like once he missed that corner three, that was like when the decision was made that like enough was because it looked like he was playing through it for the most part. Well, he tried, but I was he couldn't extend his leg. I think when he extended his leg, it was it was uh, a bit sharp. Um, you know, they were putting ice on his neck. I've seen that before when they start doing that and guys are drinking more Gatorade than anyone should. You kind of know it's cramps. And to, to follow up, uh, Jokic, uh, DeAndre did a wonderful job on him when when he was in there, and then in double overtime, Frank's in there. There's there's not really a good answer there there at that point, right? In terms of maybe yeah, down. Well, we talked about that in the pregame. Like if you double him, he's such a good passer. He's finding guys for threes. If you don't double him, you know, against smaller guys, he just punishes you. I thought the and one that he got on Frank was you know somewhat of a backbreaker, but we kept fighting. And um, he's, he's just an, he's an unbelievably good player. But like you said, DA did a really good job on him. And um, you know, the, the whistle that we get is, is something that I'm, I just, I got to talk to the league because I, I, I don't understand some of the calls. Like it's, it's just getting old. Um, there were a few, you know, I, I don't feel like I should have to challenge to get it right. And that, that part really bothers me because you lose timeouts and, you know, I thought, you know, for DA to play that physical and foul out and I look at Jokic, you know, <laughs> I think he had three fouls. You know, those, those are the ones that make you scratch your head sometimes. In a physical game like this, um, it's hard to accept. Next is Brendan Clean with Forbes, followed by Nick King. Hey coach, obviously Mikhail's had some some awesome nights for you guys, but you know, with the foul trouble tonight, is there anything you notice in terms of patterns when he runs into nights like this? Because there there are some every so often where he gets up there and he's in and out of the game because of the the foul calls. Yeah, I think he's just. I've talked to him about, you know, there's a game that we're playing in, but there's also a game within the game, and when you you're trying to become an elite defender, you have to know when to be aggressive and when you've already picked up one or two where you have to back off. And it, it's, it's, it hasn't plagued him, but it's happened a few times where he's picking up an early file. And so I got to get, you know, tell him to back it off and then he picks up two and you got to get him out and it, it hurts us. And so I think it's part of the growing pains and, and you know, he's, he's not guarding 
you know, second level guys. He's guarding the elite of the league every night. And those guys see the best defenders. And so, you know, him being as solid as he can early. And then as the game starts to, you know, carry on, then you, you pick your spots when you can be aggressive. But, you know, he's learning that he, he just, you know, he can't pick up those quick two because then it changes the rotation for us. And then a lot of times <laughs> the guy you want to keep him on is out of the game when you decide to bring him back in because you don't want him sitting over there and getting cold. And so that when he fouls like that, it kind of throws off our rotation rhythm also. But he he's learning. Um, and we've talked about it a ton. Like you just got to know when to be aggressive early in the game. But typically when you're guarding the best guys, you just want to be solid. And then as the game starts to, to carry on, then you can pick your spots. Next is Nick King with Channel 3, Channel 5, followed by Gina Mizell. Monty, I don't know how good of a look you had at Jamal's buzzer beater, but was anyone on your guys' side yelling for the that to be uh, him shuffling his feet before he got that off? I saw four steps, and this is what I'm talking about. I just looked at it. I saw four steps. I saw a step back and then a bump, bump, bump. So it looked like four. It was at least three. And so I'm not the only one that's watching. And this is the stuff that bothers me. If we're going to go back and look to see if the shot was, you know, on time, then we also need to look at his feet. Now, tomorrow they could come out with a, you know, late whatever and say, he, I hope they say he traveled, but it ain't going to help us. But the shot shouldn't have counted because it was a travel. I, I, I'm pretty sure you guys saw the same thing. So we just, it, it's, it hurts like heck, but it, it's going to make us better going forward because we, you know, you have these close games, your guys are battling, you're under man. But when I watched it just now, it looked like more than the steps allowed within a, a legal play. Next is Gina Mizell with sons.com and then Dwayne Rankin. Hey, Monty, uh, I know not having book kind of changes things down the stretch for you guys tonight, but just when you talk about pursuing that consistency and, and still getting used to each other as a new team, is, is closing out games, is that one of the, the tougher challenges just in general yeah. as far as just learning learning each other and, and how to do that? Yeah, no, no doubt. I mean, Chris was the main option going down the stretch. Usually it's Chris and book. Um, you know, once you get past Chris, Chris, it's it's really by committee, and we're really trying to produce open shots off of his penetration or DA's dives. Um, but the defense allowed for us to be in that position tonight, and and, and so <clears throat> it wasn't as bad um, as far as getting shots. I thought we had a lot of late clock situations that put us in the bind, and we had to try to make something up at the end of the shot clock, but. Chris was able to, to get to his spots a lot and, and knock down shots, but without book, it was a bit tougher. Final two questions would be Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic and then Kellen Olson. Yeah, coach, um, just to follow up on the, um, the, the um, challenge rule, we talked last year about it's supposed to be uh, either continuity within a play that you had thought that if something happens in a play that you can challenge that play. Is that, not was that was that revisited going into this season or no, no. what they did is they said they're going to keep everything the same as it was last year but as i as i've shared with people in the league I, i'm confused from challenge call to cha like sometimes you challenge a foul and there was no foul but then, then you go to a jump ball you know what i'm saying and then sometimes you challenge and it's successful and then you get the like it's really confusing at times. Um, tonight we challenged and uh, Porter Jr. he kicked and it was deemed an offensive foul. Last night they challenged and when you look at the challenge it looked like uh, Book was fouled before his elbow hit Harris. So it's it's something I, I know it's a work in progress I, I think it's something we're all kind of we're not as clear on it as we we should be but I, I'm I don't have a, a, a real good read on on the challenges and how it, the outcomes of the challenges is what I'm confused on at times. Final question is Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports. 
we're still confused too, Coach. Uh, to get clarification on the end of regulation, you get perfect defense on Jamal. He has an insane shot. Was there any thought to foul him, though, uh, with the that lead was up the three? That the plan, just to foul him. And okay. because DA had five, yeah. he was worried about getting six. And so I totally, you know, as a team, we understand that, but the, the goal was to foul. And, you know, the only thing I could think of in hindsight was not to have him in the game, but he's one of our best defenders. And he just hit an unreal shot. But again, I thought he, he challenged, he traveled, but I, that's, that's something that, you know, we'll look at as a squad and as a team and grow from. But I'm going to talk to the league about that because if you're going to go back and look at it, then you should see that he took more than two steps. It looked like he took four. And so if we're going to get, try to get it right, then we need to look at it in context and get it right. So, but to your point, yes. Chay, first, uh, getting back in the starting lineup, just what was that like for you? Then second, on the three uh, that tied the game, uh, just take just take us through that, how, how the play was unfolding, and you, get, you got that look. Uh, well, cut off the bench and start, and I just try to play the same way, you know, bring the same energy, do what I got to do to help my team win and help my, hold my part of the um, team bargain up. And um, so I have the same mentality starting to come off the bench. Uh, but coming off the three, I had a – the first look was obviously I was the first option on the on the flare screen. I felt like I took two people with me, so I gave it gave it back to CP, and he was able to go screen and roll with him and um, Frank. So and I was just able to just jab and just try to get open, get a shot up. I knew it was going against the clock a little bit. I got a chance to look down at the other end and saw we had like four seconds when Frank had it. So I knew I could wiggle and try to try to try to get a shot off. So uh, that was just the whole the whole play, whole mentality was trying to get a shot off at the end. Next is Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports. Hey, Jay, they had 80 paints in the point last night. They got that down to, you guys got that down to 42 tonight. Felt like the rotations were much more crisp defensively. Well, what did you see on defense tonight for the team as a whole? Yeah, we was able to just uh, help the next man. Obviously, they got a they got a good two-man game um, with Jamal and, 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 and uh, Nicola. So uh, we did a good job of just trying to, uh, limit those guys as much as possible just with team defense. I just say it's just, it's just not a two-man game on our end. It's, it's the team deal. So once we were able to watch film and watch how they were able to get in our paint last night, we were just able to make adjustments on the fly. Uh, and we, we I, obviously we cut the number in half, but came up short. So we'll keep working at it. And to follow up, when you're defending a guy like Jokic, you want to send doubles at him every now and then. But uh, the way that he passes the ball, can you kind of describe the experience of being a help defender in that situation, trying to time it? Yeah, we just did a good, I did a bad job in overtime, I think, of trapping, trapping him from the top of the key. I think he's, he's so tall, he can see over the defenders. So uh, I think usually you got to trap him, come baseline, the bottom side, just to try to surprise him a little bit and um, keep the bigger guy on the top side. But he's just a great passer. We all know that. He was able to make the play, make the read. So we just tried to throw his rhythm, throw his rhythm off as much as possible. He had got it going a little bit with scoring and, and passing. So we just tried to throw his rhythm, rhythm off a little bit. Last question is Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic. Yeah, yeah, Jay. Uh, Coach said he felt like guys were wearing down in that first overtime and kind of ran out of gas in the second. So what do you feel like? If you agree with that, you feel like that was the difference in the game at the both, end? Or could you point to something both else? Teams, yeah, both teams were talking about how gas, how tired we were. It was a back-to-back, up-tempo. Both games really up-tempo. Uh, just tough. Uh, but it was just trying to get it done. He's just... Still got to try to get it done, and obviously uh, they came up big and got and got the win. But both teams were gassed, both teams were tired. It was just wasn't one sided, so I think it was equal playing field on both sides. Jason, I thought it was going to be a minute before you got out there, but they put you in this game. Just just your thoughts on getting back in the swing of things, and how'd you feel out there tonight? I was it was great, you know, just being able to get back on the court after all the time I've been out. It was a little nerve wracking again. Felt like my first game all over, right. but. Got out there, I got the butterflies out and just pretty much tried to contribute as best as I could. What do you feel like, just to follow real quick, what do you feel like you were able to do well? And what do you feel like just moving forward, you can you can bring the team, it, 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 getting more opportunities? Uh, I feel as though that I just pretty much was good on the um, offensive end, like moving around, just trying to find open spots and just create open lanes for the team. And then things I just need to work on, just pretty much just more physicality. I kind of play a little timid on the defensive end of the day. And that's just something I got to work on as I move forward. Next is Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports. Jill, when you look at the way the game unfolded tonight, there were stretches where 
you guys were playing full with the full reserve unit and you guys battled pretty well. Just what did that feel like in a game like tonight where you had multiple guys step up with so many guys out? That was great. I mean, pretty much no matter where you're at, everybody on the team is a factor. Uh, just no matter what position you are, you might be the first man off the bench, you might be the last. Everybody on the team is a, is was at one point in time the best player to come out of their area. So, I mean, just to see everybody step up and everybody just take that initiative to help the team out, it was, it was amazing. Next is Gina Mizell with Suns.com and then Brendan Clean. Hey, Jalen, obviously two tough losses for, for the team tonight. Um, just when you guys are talking in the locker room after the game, when Monty is addressing you guys, just what are the biggest takeaways that you guys feel like you can learn from these past two nights that can help you moving forward? Uh, pretty much that you got to learn from your mistakes and move on. Uh, you can't hold your head down. Um, everybody battled tonight, but we got another game in a couple of days. So just got to pretty much continue to learn from what we did this game and prepare for the next so it's just pretty much you got to have that that short-term memory if you want to have success in this league. Next is Brendan Clean with Forbes. Hey, Jalen, I know there were a couple road trips that you didn't travel on. So I'm curious, being on the, the bench, I know you played tonight, but even last night, being around the team, what's different about what you can kind of learn from a game being in, out there with the guys versus some of those where you were maybe watching on TV or catching up on film and, and learning through that way? Uh, it's pretty much the same thing, you know, just watching that hunger and that grit. Everybody's on the court trying to battle for the win. Uh, you see, like you said earlier, you see a lot of people stepping up when we um, didn't have a lot of people. But um, pretty much it's just that, that, that idea of our team just being one of the best, trying to be one of the best teams in the NBA and, you can see that with that hunger and that grit on the court, that's what we're trying to accomplish. And obviously a long uh, game, especially after on the second of a back-to-back. -back. Looked like it was that stuff. What was bothering you at the end of the game? Why'd you have to come out? Looked like leg cramps, but I just wanted just to make sure. Yeah, cramps. Was that, what was, I mean, just, just maybe take us through that on, on what you were dealing with trying to play um, through that in the game. You guys desperately wanted to win. Um, you know, it, it happens. Um, kind of started to cramp up a little bit. Groin started to cramp up a little bit. A um, couple more things. And just with each step, it was kind of increasing a little bit. Um, and it's, it was frustrating. Um, I tried to keep them at bay, keep hydrating. Um, but sometimes it happens. This is Kellen Olsen with Arizona Sports and then Brendan Clean. Hey, Cam, just your thoughts on how the game progressed. You guys battled really hard tonight and especially improved defensively uh, from last night to tonight, it felt like. Um, yeah, I felt like we, we did play very hard. Um, put it out there. Um, it was frustrating, very frustrating. Frustrating to leave the game late. Um, Frustrating that it even came down to that. Um, I felt like I got a couple opportunities, a couple threes I could have hit, should have. That didn't that didn't fall. That would have kind of sealed the game. So just pretty pretty frustrated right now. And um, yeah, this one hurts. Next up is going to be Brendan Clean with Forbes. Okay, it might not be too much of an answer from the one you just gave, but just. What do you think you guys will take out of these two games? You, you do have a few days before the next one. Just kind of what do you think will be the focus? What do you think you'll, you'll walk away from these two with? Um, two overtime games, one double overtime, one, um, one overtime. But we didn't win either of them. Um, and, and I think it's two we should have won. Everybody thinks it's two we should have won. Um, but we got to – we got to be better in these late game situations. We got to close teams out and um, we're going to improve on it. We're going to improve on it. 